Hey there, this video is going to be a deep dive into Cine EI in the Sony FX3. Now, the new firmware, version 2, which came out recently for the Sony FX3, included a bunch of cool things, which I made a video about, so I'll leave that link down below. But one of the biggest features is the inclusion of Cine EI. And I know for most FX3 users, they've never used this before because they probably haven't used a FX6 or an FX9 or any of the other Sony cinema cameras that have this. And so there's a lot of confusion. Now, if this is not for everybody, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video, but I really wanna make sure that everyone can understand what it is and how it works. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Josh, and on this channel, I cover Sony and Canon stuff videography, content creation, and of course, camera gear. So if you're into that sort of stuff, you're in the right place. As I said, this will be a deep dive into the Sony EI system of the Sony FX3. I'm gonna talk about what Cine EI is and how it works, how I personally set up my camera to give me the best possible workflow, how to get proper exposure in Cine EI, what happens when you change the EI or exposure index, the limitations of this, and maybe when you shouldn't use it. First off, what is Cine EI? It's a system that's in the FX3 and in other Sony cinema cameras. It's a way that we can really strip it down and streamline the camera to get the maximum image quality and dynamic range in S-Log3. An analogy that I like to use is kind of like you take a normal car and you kind of strip everything out of it, and now it can do one thing really, really well. It can go fast. And it's kind of like we have a race car now. We have it stripped down and streamlined, and that's kind of what we have going on here. Now, I know a lot of people probably watching this video and why I wanted to make this video was, have been using mirrorless cameras where you can change the ISO. Now, you can only use this camera in Cine EI with two ISOs, either 800 or 12,800. It has two base ISOs, a low of 800 and a high of 12,800. Now, as I said, this is not for everybody, but if you keep that in mind that you can only use two ISOs, this will make this whole thing make a lot more sense. Now, most of us are used to using mirrorless cameras where we can control the exposure using the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. So you won't be able to do that other than switching between low and high. Now, this is really reminiscent of shooting on film where you had a certain speed film and you set the camera to that speed and then the camera would know how to do, get the exposure properly. That's kind of what's going on here. We're setting this camera up to work the best at the best way that it can run and we have to do a lot of other things. So when you change the exposure index, which has the same sort of controls as changing the ISO, it does not change the exposure that you get out of the camera. So if you change the exposure index, which I will show you later in this video, it literally does not change the way the camera records the exposure. So it just changes the way it looks on the screen. So keep that in mind, you can shoot at 800 or 12,800. And there's a very few amount of cases where I would say you need to change your, your EI or exposure index. If you take a look at this chart here, this is provided by Sony, and this shows you the dynamic range of S-Log3 given a certain exposure index. So if you take a look at the center of the image here, and that is gonna be at exposure index of 800, which is the base of this camera, you can see that you'll have six stops of dynamic range over middle gray and nine stops below middle gray. So if you wanna change the exposure index, either down or up, you will change where those stops of dynamic range occur. Now, generally, I don't recommend that you increase the exposure index above the base unless you need to jump up to the high base, but if you're shooting at the low base of 800, I don't recommend going higher. Now, there are some situations where you might wanna lower the exposure index, which we'll cover later on in this video, but for example, if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of highlights, it's kind of like a moody or dark scene and you wanna get more information in the shadows, you can lower the exposure index. So if you take a look here, when you lower from, let's say, 800 to 400, you shift one stop of dynamic range from the highlights to the shadows. So you had six, now you have five in the highlights and in the shadows you had nine, now you have 10. So you don't get anything for free. <laughs> if you change the exposure index, all you're doing is you're shifting the stops of dynamic range from the highlights to the shadows or vice versa. Now let me show you where this is in the camera because it's actually right at the bottom of the screen and I wanna show you this so you understand what these numbers are and you understand what's going on. So if you look here, you see 800 EI. So that's saying that the exposure index is at 800. That's the low base. The 6.0E is actually the number of stops of dynamic range in the highlights. So if you think back to the chart, you'll see that it, at the exposure index of 800 at that base, you have six stops of dynamic range in the highlights. So that's on the screen here. And then the L stands for the fact that we're in the low base. So I will show you how I set up my camera with custom buttons in a few minutes. And so if I hit this button to change it, I'll change my base ISO to 12,800. So this is the high base. And you can see that it changed from 800 to 12,800 and you have the H instead of the L down there. But notice the six didn't change. That's because this has a dual base ISO. So at 12,800, it should act exactly the same as it does at 800 
just at a different sensitivity. Now that you got a little bit of an introduction about what CineEye is, it'll make a lot more sense when I get through the examples later on in this video. And I first wanna show you how I sort of customize the camera so I can streamline the process and make it more like that race car that I was talking about. Really tweak this to run in CineEye and make it feel even closer to a cinema camera. And I just realized that I have a Canon lens cap on my Sony lens. Same filter thread. You guys know I shoot both Canon and Sony. <laughs> Anyways, so let me show you how I do this in the camera. And if you ever used a cinema camera, you know that you're probably not changing the same settings that you would normally in a mirrorless camera. So let me show you how this works. And again, this is just for shooting Cine EI. If I'm not shooting in Cine EI, uh, I would probably set it up differently, but I'll just give you some ideas here. There's no right way to do this. I'll just show you what I've been doing and they might change in the future. So here's my FX3. When I'm doing exposure, I'm controlling it with the three ways, right? So the, the, the dial in the front here, I'll use for shutter. The one on the back here on the top, I'll use that for aperture and the wheel will be for ISO. So I'm gonna change these. So let's go into the menu system. And the way that you change these is if you go down to the briefcase, operation customize, you can go to the video custom keys and they're all in here. So let's talk about those first. So I'm gonna change my exposure dials. So we're gonna go down to the bottom one, the front, which is usually shutter speed, uh, I'm actually gonna turn this off <laughs> because I constantly bump it and if I'm gonna change to a higher frame rate, like I'm always shooting 24 frames a second, I always have a shutter of one over 50, but if I change to a higher frame rate, I'll just go in and change the shutter. I have to dive into the quick, uh, the my menu or main menu thing anyway. So I'm just gonna turn that off. I'll, I'll play with this, but I'm gonna try that. Now the other thing is I'm gonna leave the back dial on the top as aperture because that's just muscle memory for me. And then the wheel on the back, which is set for ISO or EI, exposure index, I'm gonna turn this off as well. And I'll talk about how I make that change a little bit later. So I'm gonna go down here and turn this to not set. So now the only thing I can really change in the camera quickly is gonna be the aperture. And that's great because I never wanna change the shutter speed. I have plenty of times I bumped it and been at the wrong shutter speed. Okay, so now what are some other settings that I wanna change here? Let's go to the top. And what I did was the button number one, which is the one right next to the shutter, this one here. I'm gonna change that to, what I, well, you can see it in my menu here, to the display main menu. And the reason I do that is that I'm using that main menu quite a bit and you, not even using the quick, uh, the function button on the back very often. I talked about this in that other video. So I set that one to display main menu. So that'll open up that sort of quick menu that all the settings are in. And then make sure that number three is set to ISO or EI. And so what that allowed me to do is the ISO button that's labeled on the camera, it's labeled ISO here on the top, that will allow me to change the exposure index. So I'll hit that and then I can change the exposure index and I'll show you that. Now onto the back, the other buttons I'm changing here, back. I changed button number six, which is the down button. So this button here, I changed that to change the base ISO. So where this is, it's under exposure and second one down, base ISO switch. And that will allow me to change from the low base ISO to the high base ISO with one button. It'll be super handy, I'll show you that later too. The last thing I change is going to be the number two. And that one is the button that's down here, it's the trash can button. So what I'll do is I will change that to display the LUT on and off. So that you can see it here, it says display LUT switch. That will turn the LUT on and off, which is really handy for checking exposure, which we'll definitely use an example later on in this video. So those are the settings that I have. As I said, they might change in the future, but this is what I think is gonna be handy for right now for shooting in Cine EI. Now that we have those settings done on the camera to really streamline it to be that little uh, race car for shooting Cine EI, let's talk about monitoring. Now, if you are using an external monitor, a lot of this will still apply because basically what's going on in the camera is gonna get exported out. There's a couple of settings in there, but we're gonna focus on exposing the camera using the tools in the camera. And it's really important to understand this because there's some subtleties here that'll help you get proper exposure. Now, the biggest difference that I found with the exposure stuff with the new update is that when you're shooting in Cine EI or Cine EI Quick or the flexible ISO mode, then you no longer have the view assist. Now, view assist was what we used to use before this firmware update in S-Log3. And when you turn view assist on, 
it would add sort of a LUT to the screen that would make it more contrast and saturation, look more Rec. 709, but it didn't bake it in and it didn't actually change the exposure on the camera. So when you were judging exposure, you were looking at S-Log3. Now that got removed from these different modes. And so you can either have the LUT on or off, but when you turn the display LUT on, like for example, S709 or a custom LUT, what you're monitoring on the screen obviously is that light, but also the exposure that the camera's showing you. So in terms of the histogram and the zebras are based on the LUT and you need to be conscious of that. So the numbers that Sony provided, they provide numbers for skin tones, for middle gray and for uh, a white card. So I tend to use middle gray for getting exposure and controlled lighting situations. So we'll be looking at 41% if you're shooting an S-Log3 with the LUT turned off. If you have the S709, which is the provided LUT, you need to be aiming for 45%. So let's take a look and I'll show you how this works work with an example. And then I'll talk about changing the Cine EI setting to a lower number. Got the camera in Cine EI mode and I have the S709 LUT turned on. So let me show you my settings here. So we are shooting at the base of 800. You can see I'm using S709 and the LUT is on. So there are a lot of ways to get proper exposure. And if I am shooting outside or more run and gun, I, I do it differently. Now for something like this, where it's controlled lighting, like a talking head or an interview or something like that, I use zebras in the camera and a gray card. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. If this camera had false color, I'd use that. I use that on my C70 all the time. If you have an external monitor that has false color, you can use that too. But I wanna show you about the tools that are in the camera. So let me show you how to set up the zebra. So if you press the menu button and you go to the exposure uh, folder here, let me go to zebras. We're gonna set a custom zebra level. And as I was just saying, we need to make sure if we have the LUT turned on or off, it'll determine a different exposure that we're shooting for. So here for custom one, we're gonna set this to 45 because we are shooting with the LUT on and I'll show you with the LUT off and how that changes it. And I'm gonna set this to plus or minus one so it's a little bit more accurate. So hit okay, and then back out of the menu. And then we're gonna turn the uh, zebras on. There's a button, uh, it's the left of the control wheel in the back. So now the zebras are on and we are underexposed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the aperture until I get proper exposure on my gray card and you'll watch the zebras. So I'd say that looks good. So the zebras are at 45%. They're hitting the middle of the gray card. Uh, I have one key light off to the left of the frame here, so that's why it's a little bit brighter on the left-hand side. But there you go, that is properly exposed. Now, if I turn the LUT off, you will see the exposure change. So you see it in two ways. You can see the zebras, as I turn the LUT on and off, you can see the zebras moving on the gray card. And you can also see the histogram down here changing. So you can clearly see that the exposure changes depending on if you have the LUT turned on or off. So you just have to be conscious about that. So as I said, we're looking for 45% with the LUT on, we're looking for 41% with the LUT off. So let me turn the, um, the zebras to 41% and go back out. And now you can see it's in a different spot, but if I turn the LUT off, boom, properly exposed. So that's how you would expose if you have the LUT on or off. So you have to be conscious about that and set your zebra levels appropriate. So let's turn the LUT back on because I like shooting with a lot on, it's easier to see what you're doing. And I'll go back and change the zebra levels, or zebra level to 45, and there we go. All right, so now let's talk about lowering the exposure index. So for a scene like this, I might actually be the one situation where I do change the exposure index because there really isn't a lot of highlight information that I'm trying to save here. I'm trying to get more information in the shadows. So let me demonstrate how to do that here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the exposure index. So I'm gonna press my ISO button or if you have the wheel on the back, still change a set to that. We're gonna change this down to 400, so each of these is a third of a stop. So what we're doing is we're going from 800 to 400, which is one stop of light. We're gonna select that. And then to counteract that, I need to open up the aperture or increase the light. So I'm gonna open the, up the aperture by three clicks or three one-third stops, which will equate to one stop. And there you go. Now we have proper exposure at 400 EI. So what this did, was this actually did change the exposure in the camera because as you know, the EI settings don't change the exposure. But what we did do was I actually did change the aperture. So when I compared these two images afterwards, the one that I'd set the exposure at EI of 400 will be one stop brighter. Essentially what this did was it moved one more stop of dynamic range into the shadows and overexposed the image by one stop. And so this is a way that you can get more information in the shadows and how you do proper exposure using Cine EI, Zebras, and a gray card.
If that was your first time seeing this, I'm sure it was <laughs> pretty weird. Keep in mind, when you change the exposure index in the camera, you're just changing how you're getting your exposure. It is not changing the exposure that's getting recorded in the camera. So in this example that I just showed you, I changed the exposure index from 800 to 400, shifting one stop of dynamic range from the highlights to the shadows. Now, in that situation, I wanted more information in the shadows. So what this allows me to do is when I set the EI to 400, that I then overexpose it by one stop. This is a very accurate way to get a different exposure recorded in the camera. A lot more accurate than if I just guessed on the back of the camera using the exposure number or using a histogram and tried to estimate it being one stop. It's a very accurate way of getting exposure. Well, that's how I get proper exposure on the FX3 in Cine EI mode using zebras and a gray card in controlled lighting situations. Now, of course, as I mentioned, if I'm outside or doing run and gun style stuff, I expose differently. I made a video about how I do that on the Canon R5C, so I'll leave that link down below if you wanna check it out. There's a lot of similarities there. I didn't wanna include that here, it'd be a little too much, but if you're curious and you're interested and you want me to do it, I could probably make a separate video about that. Now, I also talked about changing the exposure index in that example from 800 to 400, and I really can't stress this enough that there's very limited situations where you wanna change the exposure index. And one of the only situations is when you're in a kind of uh, a well-lit situation, but there aren't really a lot of highlights. It's like a little bit darker, maybe a moodier scene where you have a lot of information in the shadows you're trying to recover. In that case, like I showed you there, you can lower the exposure index to 400, maybe 200. And what that does is because you're getting the proper exposure at that lower exposure index, you're actually increasing the exposure in the camera, kind of overexposing it so that when you bring it into post, you can bring it back down and you'll get more information in the shadows. So again, for most situations, you want to shoot at the bases of 800, or 12,800. So if you're in a very bright situation or you can control all the lighting, shoot at 800, control your exposure with the aperture and maybe an ND filter, especially if you're outside and it's really bright. If it's a really dark situation, change the base to 12,800, and then again, control the exposure using the aperture and maybe an ND filter if you're not quite at that level. Just a little bit of a reminder about the custom buttons that we set up earlier in this video and how they're gonna be used here. So if you need to change the base ISO from 800 to 12,800, you just can change that by pressing the down button on the wheel. You can change from 800 to 12,800 and back. Now, there's gonna be some questions here about Cine EI quick mode and Frankly, I don't recommend using CNEI quick mode, but I will talk about it here just so I can get those questions answered. So we're gonna go back into the menu, again, pressing our, <laughs> our nice fancy custom button there. And here we can change it to, from CNEI, we can change this to CNEI quick. And so now when I go back out and I try to change from my low to high base ISO with my button, it says, oh, you can't do that in CNEI quick. So if you need to change, the, if you're using Cine Eye Quick, which as I said, I don't recommend, and you need to change it from low to high, the way you do this is by actually changing the exposure index. So let me show you. So if we go back to the exposure index, we're gonna use the ISO button on the top, which we customized. And you can see here, we can change the exposure index. And as I raise the exposure index, you will see there is a line between 2500 and 3200, and you see an L and H. So if you change it to 3200, you'll see the base ISO jumped up to 12,800. And if you go back to 2,500, it goes to the lower base of 800. So to change your base ISOs in Cine AI Quick, all you have to do is change your exposure index. But personally for me, I'm not changing my exposure index very often, so I'd rather have the quick button and just go from 800 to 12,800. With the implementation of Cine AI, there are some limitations that have been put in this camera that weren't in there before, so I wanna bring those to your attention. First of which is auto white balance is gone. So unfortunately, if you're relying on that, you can't use that with Cine EI. So if you press the white balance button on the top of the camera or you go through the menu system, you can see that the auto white balance is grayed out. And when you click on it, it says, sorry, you can't do that. You're shooting in Cine EI. Again, this camera is really streamlined for shooting in Cine EI and it kind of is, sort of is that race car and you have to be in much more manual mode. You can shoot in sunny mode if you're outside. You can dial in the Kelvin directly if you'd like. Uh, I often use custom white balances with a gray card, so those are your options as well. Now another thing is you can't change the customizable settings in S-Log3 because there's no picture profiles and that's where you would change all the different settings in there like sharpness and all that kind of stuff. So let me show you what I'm talking about because you can still get there in a different way but not in Cine EI mode, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you go in the menu here and we're gonna get out of Cine EI mode, we're gonna go back to log shooting off and if you go back, and this is how the camera used to work, 
So if you go to the exposure and go to color tone and picture profiles, hopefully you remember this. I often have this up in my function menu as well. But if we go in here, you can change the picture profile. And when you go in here, you can change the gamma and you can change this to S log three. And if I click on that, it'll turn off my recorder. So I'm not gonna click on it, but you can change it to S log three, even though we are not in log mode, which is pretty crazy. And that's kind of a workaround if you wanna use the normal mode and still have these ways to change it. Cause if you're in flexible ISO mode, you can't change this cause there's no picture profiles. It's just locked in S log three. But if you're used to changing some of these things, like I said, the detail, which the sharpness is one thing or any of the other things that are in the camera, you can still shoot log with those settings using these picture profiles. But again, this is like a weird workaround and probably not how this camera's meant to be used, but it's still there if you want it. You just can't customize S-Log3 anymore with those kinds of settings. You have to use the ones that the camera gives you for, in Sony's opinion, is probably gonna be the best way to get the ultimate image quality and dynamic range. So that's why they have it set up that way. There are a couple other limitations with how this camera outputs over HDMI, so let me show you that. But before that, I have to turn this back onto Cine EI. So if we go back to the HDMI settings, which are under the briefcase, we go down to external output, HDMI output settings. You can see here that if you go to the output resolution, you now cannot output in uh, 4K. So you have to keep that in mind. If you are gonna be recording externally, you have to be careful about this. It'll only output in 1080. If you do wanna shoot in 4K, you have to go up here and change the recording media during HDMI output to off. I'm not gonna do that because it'll reset my, my recorder, but that'll allow you to set a, an output signal in 4K, but you can't record internally. And then the other option is to use RAW. If you're gonna be ex externally recording in RAW, you can turn the RAW output setting here too. But keep in mind that if you turn the LUT on and off in the camera, the display LUT, it will send that over HDMI in 4K, if you're shooting in 4K, for example. I'm not sure about RAW, I haven't tried that, but keep in mind, so that way you're probably gonna have to have a LUT installed on your monitor, or you have to get your exposure right and then turn the LUT off before you hit record. Now, if you watch this whole video and you're thinking, you know what, Josh, <laughs> I am not ready to shoot in Cine EI, that's totally fine. You can still install the update and use your camera just like you did before. So let me show you how to do that. So if we go into the menu and we go to the log shooting settings, and we can change it from Cine EI to log shooting off, this will set up the camera just like you had before. You can go back and you can pick your picture profile. So under exposure and color tone and picture profile, and you can change your picture profile here. Now, a lot of people have been asking me what happened to picture profile seven, eight, and nine. Those are the ones that were set up for log. So they took those out because we're in log off right now. But as I mentioned earlier in this video, you can change any of the picture profiles to shoot an S log three. So again, kind of a workaround, but if you are gonna shoot log, I'd probably recommend going into the log shooting settings and just choosing the flexible ISO. What that allows you to do is it shoots it in S gamut 3 dot city in S log three. It really streamlines the camera in S log three but you still get the old school controls of using the ISO and not Cine EI. So that is definitely a benefit. Well, that wraps up my explanation of shooting Cine EI on the FX3. I was really motivated to make this video because I saw a lot of questions out there from FX3 users who have never shot in Cine EI on other cinema cameras. They're really curious about how it worked, maybe a little intimidated by it, maybe they wanna dabble in a little bit or maybe switch over to shooting in it. If you are getting into Cine EI for the first time, I highly recommend that you either shoot at the base ISO of 800 or 12,800. Don't start changing the exposure index right off the bat. That's a more advanced technique and can sometimes jeopardize your image unless you really know what you're doing. If you stick to those bases, <laughs> you'll be in good shape. Hopefully you found this video helpful and useful. And if you did, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It would really be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.